Good morning all, it's post bag. I'm going to start with these two which are instantly identifiable. I'm going to turn these to the front and uh, when I see these I just immediately know these are from Tader. So let's get them open. Now, I'm not going to use the knife for these because these are beautifully stapled. I'm going to use the staple remover and uh, do this properly. Yes, Tater appears to be the Thai Shine Company. Okay, let's open this second one. Uh, let's pull the staples out with my pliers. And they're just beautifully packed. It's a, a paper envelope. And this is really good because you can separate the bubble wrap from the cardboard for recycling purposes. And uh, yeah, they're beautifully packed in these pink envelopes. Let's take this one out, which I think is probably a similar set of parts. So, oh, everything's a little bit in disarray. So let's open these. And in here, I've got uh, logarithmic pots. Now, lots of sellers seem to sell the linear pots, but not many sell the logarithmic ones. And as we know, they're not truly logarithmic. They're kind of just two gradations of linear, but at least it approximates to logarithmic. I've uh, got some more of these uh, knobs, which I like, with, which are the black with the green inset. I just really like that color scheme. Uh, there are some chips in here. These are, oh yes, the NE556. Finally, I can take out my Bodge 556, which I made out of two 555s. Five, five, five. So I'll get that out, out in a moment. Uh, more of the knobs. I think there was a funny anomaly where if you bought two, you actually get a better deal than if you bought five. The discounts didn't seem to be applied uh, very well, but uh, in the end, I just thought, oh, well, I want more anyway. And some more of these 10K logarithmics, which are going to go on my revision to output PCB. But let's just have a look at where the 556 is going first. There's not a lot on this panel at the moment because I've taken most of the boards off uh, to rework them. This is the board that has my uh, dual 555 bodged 556. So that's going to come out. I'll put the 556 in. I might even do it right now. This is the board, the output board that's going to a Rev 2. So, of course, I need more of the 10K log pots for these pots. Uh, I've got that board. I'll do a reveal on it fairly soon. It uh, gets rid of all these mini jacks and goes to a ribbon cable connector so that all the signals that were coming down to here come down a ribbon cable. More about that later. Let's get this board off and put a 556 in it. Yes, this is the one. Now, the 556 is laid out in such a way that, yes, you can use 255s. There's a bit of cross-coupling for the power connections, um, but they have to come out now. Oh, that's going to be a bit tricky. Well, I suppose these are going to be slung out anyway, so I don't need to worry too much about keeping them neat. Yeah, so that was my uh, 556 made out of two 555s, and it worked. It was fine, but now that I have the 556s, I can plug one of those in and all will be well with the world. That looks better, doesn't it? So a proper 556 in there. There's um, an 8-pin array here on the bottom, but that's to take one of my little daughter boards, which has a stereo uh, full-size quarter-inch jack on this one, and that's for the foot switch. But in order to test this, I didn't need to fit um, some of these components, so they're not fitted yet. But I will fit those in due course when this board needs to be integrated into the vocoder system. So this is what I bought, uh, two times black knob, but I bought three of them with green pointer soft touch. 99 cents for two, free shipping, and these came from Tader 2009. I'm always a bit wary about buying three of a multiple item because I have had in the past where I've bought sort of two lots of two and they've only supplied two so uh, but Tader reputable reliable they get that sort of thing right and these are the five 10k a a is the logarithmic taper potentiometers five pieces for four dollars 79 so that's almost a dollar each 
free shipping and again Tader 2009. But let's take a look at the price of just two of these things. Yeah, so here's Tader's listing for two 10K logarithmic taper tensiometers and you pay 189 for two. That's a slightly better deal than you you get paying four dollars something for five, I think, isn't it? There's not a lot in it really, is there? And uh, I just realized I didn't have my little image going. So hello. Uh, this is five pieces of the NE556 dual bipolar timer. $2.29 free shipping and again from Tada. And the next one, one time soldering iron. I don't think so. A dress on both sides, really irritating. But there you go. They seem to relabel these things. Don't quite know why. When they come into the country, I suppose. I'm not sure. But yes, here it is. It is a TSBC2 uh, soldering iron tip specifically for... Is that bent? That's bent. Um, for the TS100 soldering iron. This is lead-free soldering tip. Well, not for long because I'm going to put leaded solder on it oh that didn't go through there at all but uh, yeah this has got bent in the post the question is can i bend it back yeah look at that that's well wonky let's try bending it back this is probably not a genius idea maybe i quite like a bent soldering iron tip i suppose the thing to do is to check whether it works Right, lithium battery, Ryobi style, modified uh, fuel gauge, which I can plug my iron into. That's the iron. I don't bother tightening these up anymore because they sit reasonably well in the body of the iron. Let's plug this one in. Tweak it because I like the wedge sort of pointing up and to the left by 45 degrees or thereabouts. Switch on and see if I can solder something. Well, smoke came off it, which is a good sign. Solder melts on it, which is another good sign. And uh, I can clean it on my sponge, which is another good sign. Yeah, that seems fine. And um, a bend in the tip is purely cosmetic from my point of view. I really don't care about that at all, but that works. So this is it. It's the TS100 Mini Digital LCD Soldering Iron. They've got various tips. In fact, I think they've got all of them for this iron. There are seven in total. You probably can't see that pop up. The one I bought is the TSBC2. Now, up to now, these had been pretty universally $10 or $9.99. But this one, was, uh, well, this one was priced in pounds, $5.99, which is $7.00. 43 oh there's a little bit of shipping 73 cents and this one came from magenta 688 next up i'm going to open these two this one again a dress on both sides really irritating so let's open it like this and these are some rather nice metal audio connectors i think there are two in here let's get the other one out yeah these are mono jack right angle to phono but metallic they're rather pretty uh, okay let's open this one and this one it seems to have fallen out of the uh, padding and just gone to the one side and this was another rather interesting one this is two uh, phono female sockets to one phono male plug but again metallic let's get them all open Yes, I have my vocoder boards all laid out on the bench uh, for a previous video and I thought I had various connections and I thought it would be nice if I had uh, coming from one of the boards a phono outs going off to two phonos but at a right angles because the speaker was over here somewhere. So I treated myself to this monster uh, one phono to two phono. So the idea of this is you've got a mono phono coming out of one of the boards and then I can split that into two phonos to go into my stereo power amp. It just gives me more volume. It'll be the same signal sent to both uh, left and right channels of the power amplifier, but as I say, more signal. And at the front end, I have one of the jacks and I have my MP3 player feeding in. And I wanted it right angle so it doesn't dangle off the front of the desk because when that happens, you hit it with your knee or something and everything flies off the desk. 
So I wanted it all on the desk. So yeah, I treated myself to a couple of these as well. They're all rather nice. They say gold plated, but I don't suspect it's real gold. Let's go to eBay. So this one is two pieces. That's odd because I only got one pieces. Oh yes, two pieces gold plated. Well, gold plated, do you think? One male to two female RCA splitter, but they have two models, model one pieces or model two pieces. So I bought the model one pieces and I got one pieces. Oh look, there's only 11 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the sale. Uh, so yeah, I got quantity one of one pieces, $1.87. Instantly, how much is the two pieces? That's $3.47, free shipping. And these came from Chen Cine 2. And uh, this one is one times right angle, quarter inch, 6.35 to RCA female jack. Yeah, quarter inch jack to RCA female. That's the one. Uh, right angle connector, $1.89. Now I bought two of these, so I probably only paid the one lot of shipping, $2 shipping. And these came from Goodbye 716. And finally, Cyril, let's do this one. I'm cutting this one carefully because I know it's cables. Ah, that's interesting. I didn't realize I was going to get those. And lots of cables. That's interesting because I thought these were going to be... That's very interesting because I thought these were going to be four ways. There's nothing else in there. These are all three ways to three ways. Something not quite right here. No, it is correct. This is what I ordered. Um, 20 pieces of three pin JST XH. So they're the 0.1 inch, 300 millimeter length with a plug at each end. Now these things are commonly available on eBay, but not so much with a plug at each end. Generally it's a plug at one end, although actually I think that's supposedly that's a socket in effect, isn't it? A socket at each end, uh, sorry, at one end, and just bare ends at the other end. But I particularly wanted plugs at each end, sockets at each end, because I want to interconnect my power distribution board with my actual PCBs. So these are 300 mil length, and these are another 20 pieces, 200 mil length. What is odd is the colours of these, because in the original listing, these were shown, I think, as red, black, and yellow wires and i seem to remember that i got one of those messages from ebay seller you know where they normally sell say oh your purchase is in progress and i got an extra message saying you will receive red for the 300 mil and black for the 200 mil so let's look at these on ebay to see how these actually differ from what i thought i was getting so these are the 200 millimeter cables with a female connector on both side uh three pin jst xh so 0.1 inch 20 pieces and yes they show in the photograph as having yellow black and red now the thing is those yellow black and red are often the wrong way round so you end up having to pull the wires out if you want to be purist about this and have red as the plus 12 which i do and yellow as the minus 12, you end up fiddling about, taking them out, rearranging them. So in some ways, having them where the colour's the same on all four connections, on all three connections, is an advantage. Unless, of course, they've crossed them over. I'll have to check that. Uh, yes, that's an interesting one. I don't quite know whether they need to be crossed over. But anyway, um, I'm not too concerned about the fact that they've swapped the colours um because that might save me work in pulling all the pins out and crossing them over let's have a quick look at the other one and this is the other one 20 pieces three pin jst xh 300 millimeter wire these are the ones that they gave me in red once again the photo shows them as uh yellow red and black and i've received these where all the wires are red 8.99 for these longer ones with 199 shipping what's that make it that's 11 dollars effectively um and the seller is cheng dong sheng 1969 so is this good or bad that they've substituted these multicolor cables for cables which are one color 
don't really know. <laughs> so the way these work is that I've got power going in onto this board on uh, these little terminal blocks. That then comes up through this edge connector type socket and that gives me a distribution on 3-pin JSTs. Then I will link the 3-pin JSTs on my power distribution to the individual board. So let's take this one that I just put the 556 into. The other side of this plugs into there, of course. Now, I could have made these up myself by buying the crimp tool. They're about $15. But I just thought, I don't really want to get involved in all that. I'd rather have them pre-made for me. So these are fine. They're all made up. It's just this issue of whether I particularly wanted my color coding scheme of black for zero volts, red for plus 12 and yellow for minus 12. I won't now have that with these cables. And so these are today's post bag items. Actually, I just wanted to take a look at the old versus the new soldering iron tips. I'll get a magnifying glass. Yes, yeah, so you can see the uh, old one on the left has started to corrode away. There's a lot of sort of black corroded metal really in the joint between the tip and that main barrel. The new one, of course, looks fairly beautiful. I'll probably keep running the old one until it actually gives up. I mean, it may never give up. It might go on forever. Uh, the new one, of course, does have that slight bend in it, but I'm really not concerned about that. For some odd reason, that doesn't bother me. Now, big thanks as usual to my sponsor, JLC PCB. And I just wanted to mention that JLC PCB are going to be at the Rome Maker Fair, which is on between the 18th and the 20th of October. So if you can go to the Rome Maker Fair, go and visit JLC PCB because they're going to have free gifts and vouchers for PCB. So well worth a visit to their stand. And a big thanks as well to my Patreon patrons who helped me to buy all this lovely stuff. If you would like to become a patron, then you can click this link here. There are another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to this channel and would like to be, you can click this link here to subscribe. Cheerio.